Hello everyone, Professor Arneline Torres here for International Tourism and Culture course. For this presentation, we will learn about travel motivations. So as we start, let's look at the learning content of this presentation. First, we'll start with motivation and we'll see or understand the definition of motivation. Then we'll go to formation of travel motivation and then from travel motivation to travel actions. We will also find out what are the reasons for traveling. And uh, aside from that, we will look at the factors that influence travel motivation and action. And for the last topic, we'll look at the typologies of travel motivations. So as we start, we will see the importance of travel motivations and its effect on travel decisions. Let's look first at the definition of motivation or let's try to understand what motivation is. Motivation is something that prompts people to take action. So let's say for example uh, you have a budget, you have money to spend and you don't want to go shopping, you don't just want to eat in a local restaurant but instead, you would like to see a different place. Maybe a place a little away from where you are living or where you are right now. So that can be a domestic uh, tourism activity. Or you may want to go overseas to, to go to a certain place. So this motivation prompts people to take action. Now, sometimes we don't have the budget, but because we do have the desire to see a certain place, we work hard to achieve a goal. Like for some students that I know, what they usually do is they take some part-time job. So they go to school and during their free time or they try to make some free time to uh, do some part-time job so that when the semestral break comes, then they can travel to wherever they would like to go. And in that way, it satisfies their uh, need. The need can be something like it's uh, not the physiological need, but usually the need for contentment. Like going to this place is in your bucket list or it's uh, your dream for a long time now. And so for you to uh, be satisfied and be contented, you will find a way to satisfy that need. We have uh, questions that will explain what motivates us to travel. So first, why do we go traveling? Ask yourself. Uh, you've been to so many destinations. You've been to so many places, not only within Korea or not only within your country of residence, but you've been somewhere. Now, ask yourself, why do you go traveling? And why do you choose to travel to a certain place? There are so many places to visit, locally or overseas, but why have you chosen those places that you have visited? And also, why do you participate in a certain travel activity? The travel activity can be done solo, like as I've said, uh, current happening in the tourism industry are the emergence of people who would like to go solo traveling or maybe traveling with a group like your friends or maybe traveling with family or sometimes for people who are working in a company and part of their exposure or incentive would be to travel as a group. Moving on, let us try to see, for us to understand travel motivation, let's try to see how this travel motivation is formed. How does it start? So first, it starts with a consumer need. What is a consumer need? A consumer is somebody who needs something. Like you can be a consumer, your family can be a consumer, or maybe friends or couple. So when we say consumer, it doesn't matter how many people 
are we talking to as long as they have identified their need. From that consumer need, it will go to the thinking. The perception is the thinking. Consumer perception of what will satisfy their need. So satisfying their need would mean what will be my qualifications or what will be yeah, my qualifications for a destination uh, before I considered it as a destination that I would like to see or as a place that I would like to see. On the other hand, thinking of a destination, there exist an actual attractions or actual destinations. Like for example, here in Korea, there are so many beautiful places to visit. Uh, one very common and uh, preferred tourist destination is of course Jeju. People who are living out of Seoul would like to see Seoul. People who are far away from the beach would like to see Busan and enjoy. So there are actual attractions. The idea after that actual attraction is what are the consumer's perception of the attraction? Perception means a subjectivity. Perception means why will they choose that destination? So when you travel, you have a reason for traveling. Like in my case, I usually travel to places because I would like to eat local food or I would like to mingle with the local people. And so whenever I travel, I see to eat that I experience how the locals live. That's, that's my consideration. So from the consumer need and their perception of what will satisfy their need, and on the other hand, the consumer perception of the attractions. If you blend these two, okay, if these two will agree, what will happen is the motivation to visit destination. So let's make it concrete by giving an example. I have a weekend. Okay, I'll use myself as an example. I am the consumer and I would like to eat authentic Korean food. And I would like to be a traditional Korean food. So that's what I'm thinking. I would like to go to a place outside where I live for the reason that I would like to enjoy Korean traditional food. So I'm thinking of going where? Maybe I will say uh, Pohang, or maybe I will choose Gyeongju, or maybe I will choose Jeonju. So I have three uh, places in mind, but I will try to limit my choice into one because I cannot afford to visit the three places during the weekend. And I don't want to go to the three places on one weekend. And so I have to really make a decision among the three that I have chosen, Pohang, Gyeongju, and Jeonju, where would I like to go? And so process of elimination, I will say, Oh, Pohang is a uh, beach and there's a lot of seafood, but I don't want to eat seafood right now. Or Gyeongju is close to Daegu and there's a lot of traditional food, but I think I prefer the traditional food prepared in Jeonju. And also, I miss the Sunday Gokpak that I usually go or I usually get from Nambut Sichang. And so, by this reasoning, I have chosen Jeonju to be the destination that I would like to visit. So that's how we form our travel motivation. Okay, so if you have questions about this, if it's not yet clear, then let's talk about it during our online class. Moving forward, let's see how this travel motivation is translated or is uh, converted to travel action. Remember, motivation is only the desire. The action is the fulfillment of this desire into completion. So there's this travel need. Like I said, I want to enjoy my weekend by eating traditional food. And so I have the travel need. 
what comes after the travel need is the motivation. So I have the idea that I want to spend this weekend by enjoying Korean traditional food. So from the need that we have learned a while ago and from the formation of the motivation from that need, what will come after will be the travel action. The travel action is the fulfillment of the motivation. So now for that to happen and if that will happen, I have to consider individual factors, external factors, or what we know as the environmental factors. Individual means coming from yourself. What, what are the things that you have to consider? An external environmental factor would be about the environment or outside you, okay? And from there, again, it will go to the travel need. So the cycle goes on and on. So after you have completed this one, okay, then you can again go to another destination. So what are, what are my reasons for traveling? Why do I want to travel? The first and very obvious reason, and number one usually that comes into the mind of a tourist is to enjoy their leisure or holiday. So leisure or holiday means relaxation can be attractive scenery, under the sun, near the sea, with sand, and tourist destinations are the coast, beaches, countryside, and mountainous regions. So what I want to do is to just, you know, spend uh, time lazily in front of the beach, just like what you see, okay, or maybe just under the tree in uh, a mountainous region. And it can be sightseeing and staying in different places for self-education and for self-esteem. Self-education can just be simply reading a book, okay? And self-esteem would mean sometimes, you know, if you work so hard during the weekdays and you feel like you want to have a rest during the weekend. And uh, that, that uh, very needed rest during the weekend would sometimes give you the confidence again and uh, it will make you recharge once you go back to your work uh, on the next week, which is a Monday. So urban centers are common destinations. Uh, like, for example, when we say urban places for self-esteem, maybe people would like to go shopping also. Or maybe would like to take pictures. So tourists take a lot of photographs. Okay. Another reason for traveling is to do business. And when we say business, it can be trading. It can be attending meeting. Or it can be participating in conventions and exhibitions. So describing this business uh, motivation it has different characteristics. So the nature of a business um, motivation, the first one is the price is relatively inelastic. When we say inelastic, elastic means you can stretch. And elastic means it's fixed. Whether you like it or not because it's a business activity, then you don't care about the price of the ticket, the air ticket. Because you have set the date on a certain day and in a certain uh, time, then the only choice that you have is to go, okay? And so, this activity is not greatly affected by seasonal factors such as the variation in climate or holidays. Whether it's raining, whether uh, it's cloudy, or whether it's, you know, oh, very cold, or whether it's a holiday, because it's a business meeting, then it has to push through, okay? And the business trip is relatively short, but frequent. Short means sometimes overnight, sometimes just for a day, but frequent. Sometimes a businessman will travel like four times in a week, or maybe the whole week, 
but during uh, short trips like just overnight or maybe two days okay and it may require different services such as communication facilities or secretarial service. So during that business meeting and once that meeting is done, like in the accommodation venue of the business person, then that per business person may want to have like a meeting room or it would be needing some audiovisual um, equipment to push through with that meeting and sometimes when you meet with people from another country, you don't have the same, you don't speak the same language. And so you might be needing an interpretation service or you may want someone to record the minutes of the meeting for you. Okay? And these people, because they are frequent traveler, because usually um, uh, they're busy, they expect a higher standard of service. Higher standard of service, an example of it, is not waiting for a long line or not queuing. And so uh, that's the reason why you see that uh, in the airport, there is a separate check encounter for executives or for those people availing of the business class. And also uh, in the hotel, they usually don't go to a traditional routine of checking in, but instead just showing up on the front desk and immediately they are pre-booked and they just have to sign the registration uh, form. Okay, so business, the uh, motivation. The second motivation, or I'm sorry, the third motivation is cultural interest. And when we say cultural interest, this is the transmission of knowledge and ideas of the destination area or host community. So the tourist travel to learn and experience the culture of a tourist destination. Like for example, what you see in here is a foreigner um, participating in maybe a ritual or enjoying his time with the local people and also trying to be one with them by you know by wearing some costume that will uh, make him united or one with them so the prime motivational force for travel is to learn their culture so uh, learning culture would be like knowing the language knowing their beliefs, knowing their customs, like their way of Thanksgiving or their way of celebration, like their rituals, and not only about people, but they also would like to learn about their history. So when you go to this place, um, this is actually somewhere in uh, the Middle East. So there's a lot of museums and you go to monuments and you try to see cultural performances and so in short i would say that the motivation is to learn and experience the culture and moving to number four people are motivated to be close to their environment because of this their nature curiosity so they would like to go to natural areas. If some people enjoy shopping and enjoy, you know, going to shopping malls, uh, these people who are motivated to enjoy nature is uh, interested or it's characterized as a force for conservation and the preservation of nature. So they would like to see what are the different species, uh, like, for example, the butterfly and the uh the life around the forest, or maybe they enjoy, like, uh, you know, walking inside the forest and trying to appreciate nature. And probably these people are amazed how the nature is being formed here without anybody taking care of it. So it's maybe their form of relaxation. It's their form of satisfying their need if they go back to nature and enjoy the natural environment okay and for number five the motivation to study 
So they travel to overseas for them to learn, for them to avail of training in centers, and for them, such as universities, or for them to enjoy short or vacation courses. Like, for example, I know for a fact that a lot of Korean people would travel to English-speaking countries, stay there for maybe a month or two, and learn the language. So, also, some people would travel to a place unfamiliar to them and try to understand maybe how the locals live or it's part of their subject their subject requirement, like if they want to study uh, maybe cultural tourism. So they try to understand how people live and what are the local uh, supplies available within the area. Or maybe uh, if you want more example, like some students, uh, hospitality management students would go to Australia to familiarize themselves with wine, like uh, understanding the different kinds of wine, having to taste it, knowing how to serve it properly. Or some students would go to France to learn the cuisine. Okay, They would like to learn how to cook, how to prepare it. And uh, there are so many reasons uh, related to study. It can be getting the, the, the culture of the local or maybe getting a new skill or maybe just, you know, acquiring knowledge within the destination. So for number six, people are motivated to travel because of their religious belief or because of their religion. Usually religions have their center or have their place of origin. And so people who are part of that religious organization would convene or would uh, would be together for a certain purpose, like maybe an anniversary or a prayer time for all. So that is the reason for traveling. Like this Buddhist would go to Thailand or uh, this is another uh, religion. This are, I think, in, um, in Mecca. Yeah, this is in Mecca. And people who go to Mecca are Muslims. And then this is another local religion. I forgot about this, but this is also a ritual in celebration of their faith. Okay? Then for number seven, people's motivation to travel is health-related. So health-related, it can be something uh, in search for cure or for relaxation or for therapy. Like, for example, here is maybe related to cure. In here is only for relaxation. As you see, uh, she's receiving a uh, mud spa. Okay? And in here for therapy or for motivation. Okay? So there are so many activities that are health related and that you can find in different destinations. Such as of course Korea is known for its medical tourism. Thailand is also another uh, country that is offering a lot of uh, not medical but uh, I think surgery. Okay, And then Meditation is usually in India, and uh, yoga as well. And then European countries are known for their uh, advanced medical practice and also for therapy. Okay. Then another motivation is for them to visit friends and relatives. And uh, this uh, reason is socially motivated. So... Most often, when you need to fill up a form for a visa application, uh, you will be asked, what's your reason for traveling? And you will see often that one of the reasons that you can choose is VFR, or visiting friends and relatives. So uh, not uh, visiting friends and relatives can be like attending a wedding or maybe a family reunion that you always look forward to be part of. 
in it can happen like locally like here in in Korea uh, people travel especially during Solal and uh, during Chuso they, they get together as a family and so not only here in Korea but even other people would do the same uh, reason for social uh, for social uh, motivation like they miss their family uh, they miss their friends okay and so um, that's their motivation they they will not be choosing the destination but they will they would like to know where their family members or where is this someone special living and that motivates them to visit the destination and so for the ninth and i think this is the last motivation unless you can come up with more reasons to uh, push yourself to travel is sports so people are motivated to travel because of their affiliation to sports like if you are a cyclist or if you enjoy uh, doing sports or even though you're not playing but you want to watch um, different kinds of sports like for example this is very common in france the cycling tour and uh this one, of course, is um, a ski, okay? Or some people are very fond of, you know, watching basketball game. And they even would like to go to the to the gymnasium, like in Staples. Or I know for a fact that a lot of Korean enjoy watching soccer. And so they go to Spain. So those are motivations. Those are reasons why people would travel to a certain destination. So as I've said, if you know more reasons to travel, feel free to share it during our online class. And um, let's look at the factors that influence travel motivations and actions. Remember, it all starts with a need. And from that need, that is converted to motivation. And for that motivation to be uh, realized, it is moved to action. So there are individual factors or internal factors. I would say internal factors means something that is coming from you. And um, what are the considerations when you travel? Of course, the first thing that you have to understand before you travel and um, is somewhat related to your economic capacity. Usually people would like to travel, but the thing is, they don't know how much budget they would need and so sometimes people don't have their bucket list but instead they have the budget list like if i have this much money where can i go so it's always that the economic capacity of the traveler is always proportional to their choice of destination especially of course the students who are you know sometimes they don't ask money from their parents but instead they work part-time to support their travel and another uh, reason for choosing the travel activity is the spare time how much time do i have remember our definition for tourism is it needs time how much time do i need for traveling or how much not not need but how much time do i have especially for working people working people are binded with their work and so they can only afford to travel during like a holiday or maybe during their yeah their vacation their vacation days so uh the time is very limited uh when they can travel and also I would say that sex, age, and physical condition also matters. Why sex? Sex means the gender. Like in the Middle East, it's not very safe for a woman to travel alone. And I think women do not travel alone. And so uh, if you are a woman and considering traveling to Middle Eastern country, you have to understand first what are the... Uh, what should be the practices or what should be the proper behavior that you should, you know, you should consider before you go to that destination. Age is also mentioned because, of course, if you're young, you are adventurous. But if you are 
uh, biologically advanced, meaning to say you belong to the senior group. And so, because you belong to the senior group, your physical condition is not something comparable to tourists younger than you or half your age. And so, you consider these factors as well. The age, the sex, and the physical condition. The physical condition is how strong you are, how many hours of walking can you do, okay? What extreme activities are you willing to participate? And also, there are psychological factors to consider. Like, for example, your individual interest. Um, your individual interest would mean sometimes the family would like to go to a certain place, but the thing is they keep on, you know, discussing and debating where to go because they have different interests. And also it depends on your hobbies. Like if you are a person who is adventurous, most probably you would like to do some outdoor, outdoor activities. Or if you are somebody who is, um, I would say, um, an introvert, then um, you prefer to probably just stay uh, quietly in front of the beach or maybe just inside your hotel room. It also depends on your profession. Like, for example, if you're a chef and your reason for traveling is, of course, to try other food and to source for ingredients, then that will be your motivation. Uh, your attitude to life would mean, are you somebody who is allocentric? Do you remember our lesson about allocentric or psychocentric? Or uh, are you that type of person who also is, uh, who is always thinking of safety? Okay. And uh, another thing to consider is understanding the environment. I always tell people who are traveling to first check the place that you would like to go. And the first question that you have the first question that you have to ask yourself is is it safe? And um, another question can be can I go back after I travel that place? So it's very important that you first think about your safety before going to any destination. And uh, another factor that is uh, affecting the uh, decision is the level of education. So for instance, high school students enjoy a different kind of activities like they always would like to be together, they enjoy fun, they enjoy outdoor, while somebody who is tired of doing the, the full week's work may want to have a different activity. Or um, like, for example, as I've said, uh, those who are uh, in their, you know, advanced uh, studies, like, for example, students who are in the graduate level would have a different mindset whenever they go to a certain place. Maybe uh, the reason for visiting the destination is for them to find a quiet place to work or maybe to unwind. And last but not the least that you have to consider is your family. Most often, uh, families are very open, I don't know, discussing where to go. And every member of the family are heard. Their suggestions are heard by whoever is planning the, uh, the travel. And so um, you have to decide. Uh, for only one destination and if you're a big family usually it's hard to do that immediately because people have their own or members have their own uh, interest or they have their own agenda when they visit the destination so moving to the factors that influence travel motivations uh, and actions let's look at the external factors external means something that you cannot control but there's something you can do about it so it's the external environmental conditions like the overall development of the tourism industry so most often your reason or your decision would depend on the infrastructure of the destination 
or the uh, you you will ask if the economy of the country or the region is developed because of course if the economy is developed there is a good infrastructure to support the tourism activity and when we talk about enough resources that means to say uh, the transportation the accommodation the eating facilities uh, and other needs of the tourist is supplied by the destination. Another thing is the group, the family, and the social atmosphere. Sometimes you are going to a destination that really you don't want to go because it's a company outing. It's a company meeting. And so uh, that's why we say that these are travel activities organized by enterprises. Or like you receive an award, the most... Uh, uh, diligent okay employee of the year and you were given a travel incentive or a travel award you're given it an airfare or a package tour to somewhere to somewhere out there and you don't want to go but because you received that award and you cannot convert it into cash you're forced to travel and also the social surroundings do matter like your friends and your relatives so usually um, you want you just want to go with them so to close, what are the typologies of travel motivations or what are the reasons why people travel? First, they want to relax or they do travel because of health reasons and uh, of, uh, relaxation means uh, doing yoga or maybe having a massage which is also related to health. Another is to explore or to take risk and we can think about activities related to this one such as hiking or maybe bungee jumping or maybe paragliding as something that um, increases or that gives them adrenaline rush so uh, that's the reason why people would go travel also they would like to uh, nurture their spirituality and so in doing this they do it by communing with nature the appreciation of beauty of the nature like in front of the beach or maybe uh, in the forest or any places that is close to nature uh, for the fourth it's social interaction as we've said that the primary motivation for people to travel uh, when it's related to, to social uh, reason, would be to interact, be it with, uh, with the family members, like a reunion, or visiting friends, like attending a wedding, or maybe uh, a reunion as well, like a high school or a college reunion. And so people are usually motivated because they want to socially interact with friends and families. And on the fifth, religious or faith. So different religions would go to different uh, destination. Like for example, Catholics would visit Italy or would visit Jerusalem okay, or Israel. Or uh, the Muslims would visit Mecca. The Buddhists would visit Thailand. Or there's also Buddhism in Japan. Or simply go to their church temple and other places of worship and on number six business affairs and official matters anything related to business meeting convention conference are the reasons for the uh, travel and the seventh one is family responsibilities almost somewhat similar to number four social interaction but when we say family responsibilities uh it's something that you know pushes you to to really be uh to really pursue the travel uh the travel motivation to make it happen to make it an action like for example if somebody is getting married in the family or maybe it's the regular reunion and so uh sometimes you don't feel like going because you're too tired and you just want to rest but still, because it's a family responsibility, you book your ticket, you go, and you realize the travel. 
And so, I hope you learned something from this travel motivation. And not only learning, but you can relate yourself to this travel motivation. You can always think back, okay? How did you decide to go to that destination? Who is with you? What did you do? And how do you assess that uh, the fulfillment of the travel activity? So that's all about it for travel motivation. I thank you for listening. And if in case you have questions, let's discuss it during our online discussion this week.